Howdy y'all, and welcome back to another Ibracorp video. Thank you for popping in this week. As usual, it is a pleasure to have you here. Now, if you noticed our first intro there was a little bit different than usual. We had some feedback on the last one from one particular person that said we sounded too close to another YouTuber. And uh, of course, 99% of YouTubers probably say the same thing when they start the video. So I said I will change it up for this one. And uh, hopefully I've fulfilled that request by our Reddit user. So thanks very much. In any case, let's jump into today's video, guys. We're gonna be looking at a tool called Plex Tracked Sync, and I'm also gonna show you one other tool that's gonna be really easy to set up. So today it's gonna be a nice quick video, and this is gonna help us wrap up our Plex environment for the year, so you can enjoy your Christmas break with your media server at its absolute best. Obviously, it's not a finite list. There's hundreds of tools out there that work with media servers and Plex and things like that. But I reckon these two work hand in hand, especially if you followed our last video with PMM or Plex Meta Manager. Now, as you can see, we have also worked on a document for this one, so it will be up on our docs website when the video goes live. And uh, we've improved our docs website quite a bit. So if I quickly show you here, you'll start seeing these links now on the side of our docs. Do I need an update? You can just click that button and it will allow you to actually submit edits to our docs. So if something's out of date, doesn't look right, or just maybe you found an improvement. We really rely on the community to help us keep these docs up to date because obviously we're just a few people that volunteer our time. We can't always do it. And one big distinction I need to make is of course, always read the official documentation. Our docs are never meant to replace the official documentation of the developers. And so we always recommend that you guys do that. And it's also written in our disclaimer, which you'll see in the link on each doc as well. And if ours need to be updated, please submit an update. We'd be happy to pull it in for you, just like you do on GitHub. It's like a PR basically. So please always remember to check the useful link section, which is on every single doc as well as any related videos and the credits as well. If you haven't watched our PMM video, I highly recommend you do. There is some fantastic stuff that that application can do and we only covered one aspect of it. So we will come back and do the other aspects of it as well. It can do many, many things. And so I don't want you guys to get an underrated feeling out of it because it's very, very powerful. Also wanna give quick props to the developers who have worked with us and all the community members who have worked with us on those applications, especially PMM. We've had some great feedback and, we, and it's helped us improve our documentation and guides for the future. So thank you very much for being a part of our collaborative movement. So if you're interested in Plex Tracked Sync and you're also interested in one final extra tool that's gonna help you and your users see how they went through the year, something like Spotify Wrapped, for example, just before the new year hits, then this is gonna be the video for you. So hang around and let's get stuck into it. All right, guys, so here we are, Plex Tracked Sync. What does it do? So let's have a look on our page, what we've gotten from the official documentation. So media and Plex are added to tracked collection. So you can have a collection and it matches both what's in Plex and what's in your tracked account. Ratings are synchronized. So if you rate something in Plex, let's say you give something five stars in the star system, it will match it on your tracked account. So then you can go and say, oh, I rated this show five stars once before. And you will be able to then use Tracked to find other content and all the features that Tracked offers as well. Here's the most important one. Watch status are synced. So dates are not reported from Tracked to Plex. However, it does do the other way around. Watch status is probably the most important. So if you ever blow away your Plex installation, something disappears, something corrupts, you've lost all your watch status. Well, doing it this way, you'll actually be able to recover it from Tracked back to your Plex instance in future. Liked lists in Tracked are downloaded and all movies in Plex belonging to that list are added. You can edit the config file to choose what to sync. And best of all, none of the above requires a Plex pass or Tracked VIP membership. The downside needs to be executed manually or via a cron job and cannot use live data via webhooks. That's not a big deal. I mean, look, if you want to run this, there is a, obviously a cron job you can run. We've also put the container up on the CA store and Unraid because it wasn't there already. And we also added Plex Wrapped on the Unraid CA store as well for you guys. So by no means, we don't maintain it. It's not our container or anything like that. All the links reference to the official container, either on Docker Hub or on wherever else the repository lives. All we did was create the template to bring it to you guys so that it's in Unraid and you don't have to mess around trying to manually set up a container. So it's pretty straightforward. We've got the instructions here, like I said, but I'm gonna go over and switch over to Unraid like we normally do, and you can follow along on our docs if you like beside the video. 
So here we are on our wonderful Osiris. As usual, it's looking nice and ready for us to give it something to do. So as usual, the first thing we'll do is head over to the app store. So we go to apps and what I might do just to help simplify is actually go to our repository. So under Psychotics' repository here, you can see all of the apps that we've put out templates for on the app store. Now, if you have a close look, we have quite a bit of stuff in there, that's fine. But the two we're looking for here is Plex Wrapped and Plex Tracked Sync. Now, what's Plex Wrapped? I'll just give you a quick rundown and we'll get to that at the end so that it's a nice way to finish off because it's a really easy one to run. So with Plex Wrapped, it's a website-based platform and API for collecting Plex user stats within a set time frame using Tortooli. The data is displayed as a stat summary, sort of like Spotify Wrapped. So yeah, you need Tooltooly to have this running beforehand, obviously, to collect all that information. And then Plex Wrapped will put it in a nice format. So anyway, back with it. We'll come back to Plex Wrapped, but first we'll start with Plex Track Sync. So we've put that up as well for you guys. Now, if we click on that, go ahead and click Install. Well, mine's already installed, but go ahead and click Install. And here you can see the container template. There's not much to it. And that's the beauty of this. We've made this as simple as possible, or the developer has made this as simple as possible, I should say. So as you can see, we've got some instructions here just to get you going. Always refer to the official stuff and on our docs as well for the installation. So the template's ready to go. The only thing you may or may not want to change is if you want to go from bridge to your custom network. However, you normally set up your applications, go ahead and do that. Your app data location as well is where Plex Track Sync will live and stores all of its config files. Now, as you can see, once we start the container up, here's what you need to do. So we're going to the console and then we'll need to put this in here. So go back to your Docker tab. There's Plex, there's Plex, so there's Plex, so there's Plex Track Sync. We'll left click it and go to console. And in the console, we'll paste that command and hit enter. Now, on your first start, it's going to ask you for your Plex username or email address. And it will ask for your client secret and client ID. Now, like we said, if you don't know what that is, come back to our docs here, which we got from the official docs as well. You'll need to create a Tracked TV account. So create a Tracked TV free account. You don't have to pay anything. Go into this link and we need to create an API app. So once you go in, here's the information you need to put into the app and then you'll be given a client ID and client secret. Following the installation, as you go through, you'll see that it will ask you for that information. So you'll put that in when it asks for it and then once it's done it actually will save that information so if we go to the app data folder here you can see once our first run starts and we've saved our config it will save it all in here in these json and env files so then we've got that stuff saved so you don't have to type it every time after that now once you run it you'll see what's happening here so right now it's going through everything i have in plex where i'm up to in that series or episode or movie whatever the case might be and it will then synchronize it over to track so let's go over to track so here we are in track i have added zero of this information manually this has all come from plex track sync and as you can see, it starts to fill it out and it re looks really, really cool. So if you have a look here, watch TV shows, how much we've watched, watch movies we've watched, genres, uh, what's our most watched TV show, what's our most watched movie, uh, stuff you've watched recently, it's all here. It's all coming from Plex directly and it's actually accurate. It's up to date, which is really, really, really cool. The other thing is you can now use all the other features that Tracked can offer you. So if you wanted something that's similar to content that you've watched, if we click on 30 Rock, for example, once you click on the item, then we can see the stats that we've got. So we know we've actually got 100% collected of this series. Now, obviously you can do that in Sonar, so that's not too big of a deal, but you can add it to watch lists, or you can then add it and create your lists in here and see how much of that list you've got. And since it's all automated and you just basically run the script, it's not that hard to do. And that's pretty cool. And that works hand in hand, like I said, with Plex Meta Manager. Because with Plex Meta Manager, we're also reading from track. So if we want to build lists, build collections and things like that, and we want it to read it from track, we can say, well, from track, we know that we've watched all this content before. So by all means, I don't think it's the end of the world sort of scenario. Um, so I think with this sort of tool, it's gonna to make your life a little bit easier and you can have a little bit more fun with your data from Plex. So then you can really think and say, well, I've watched all this stuff, maybe I want something else. What's my all time stats, for example? You know, have the stuff written out for you and it's pulled directly out of 
you get these stats and it's pulled directly out of your Plex instance. So you know that it's all about what you've watched and helps you keep track. So big props there to the developer. Just so you're aware, the developer here is Taxel and it's Plex Track Sync on GitHub. So please guys, if you have some feedback, if you wanna help support the dev for their work, jump in here, buy them a beer if they've got the option, whatever the case might be, even if it's just giving them feedback. Really, really important stuff. So go in there and have a look. Obviously that's the best place to get the information. If we scroll down right to the bottom, you see they've got the Unraid setup steps there. However, because of we've already put the container template up for you on CA, you don't have to do any of this part here. Pretty much that's the only step and we've got that in our docs as well. So thank you very much Taxu for your awesome work. It's a really, really cool tool, much appreciated. Now, like I said guys, it's gonna be a nice smooth video, nice and quick. And that was so quick, you guys saw that. We pretty much started the container up, run the command, we put in our Plex and track info and the rest is history it will start synchronizing for us from Tortulli. Of course, keep in mind that it's pulling that information from Tortulli, so make sure you're putting in the correct info when it asks for your Tortulli config. And it's gonna read everything from there. So if you've purged it recently, or you've started fresh, you know, a fresh instance or anything like that, obviously don't be surprised if it doesn't synchronize anything because it needs that information. And now onto our second and final plugin. Now I can assure you after this video guys, we're gonna be taking a break from Plex. I just wanted to get this last one out here so that you guys can end your year on some nice fantastic tools and help out some other developers who their work has sort of gone under the radar. So the final thing we've got here is Plex Wrapped. Now, like I said, if you've seen Spotify's Wrapped concept, which is recently, you know, just over the last week, it's been coming out quite often. Spotify will give you this you know, really graphic interface for you to see how your year went with music, what you watched, what you listened to, what was your favorite artist, what was your favorite playlist, you know, how much time you spent doing this and that, whatever the case might be. Flex Wrap is the same. And it could be something that you just start up at the end of the year for all your users and give them the link and let them have a look and see how their year went. Um, it's not something you always have to keep running. The other thing is you can set the date. So you can say maybe you only want it to go from June to December and show information from there. Um, perhaps you want it from the last two years, you can do that. And here on GitHub is the project. Now the developer's probably gonna kill me because I don't really know how to pronounce it, so if you give me there, mate. I'm gonna say Ayun, so Ayun Firen, and it's Plex Wrapped. Uh, again, we don't have this one on our docs because it is so simple to start that we don't really need a doc for it. I think you guys can manage it perfectly fine. But I'll walk you through their official page here. And here's some of their features. So custom timeframes, custom introduction, so we can change this for example. Caching of results, friendly dynamic display for stats with nice illustration, email and username search, and an admin page with authentication for settings, and pre-caching of data. So again, here's some of those screenshots, what that looks like. And also props goes to Tortulli, of course, because it's reading from the Tortulli API. And here's the instructions, as you can see. So we wanna make sure we're pointing it at the right place and that our directories are saving the cache files. Now, you don't have to worry about that because we've put up the template, so all that stuff will be saved for you. And as you can see, the Plex wrap folder is here. We've got cache, config, and the wrap.log. So that's mapping it all for us, so we don't have to type in the authentication stuff every time we start it. But I'm gonna open it up for you and just give you a look now. So when we first start it, we have to jump into the admin screen, which will ask us for a little bit of information. Now, from what I can see, these placeholder information here, so you might see 8181 as a placeholder, for example, I would actually type the port over the top. And I believe there was an issue logged on GitHub saying that, you know, people assume with that there, it means it's pre-filled. Just pre-fill it in, just fill it in anyway. So the first thing you're gonna see is the Tortulli API key. You have to put your API key in there from Tortulli. If you don't know where that is, sign into Tortulli, go to settings under web interface, and then underneath you've got your API key. If you just click this I here, it will unlock the view for the API key so you can just copy it raw. Then come back to wrapped and put the API key in here. Next, you'll need your IP address for where Tortulli is living and the port that it's running on. You've then got the Tortulli item length and the root for Tutuli as well. So if you're using a root folder or anything like that, you can set that, it's completely optional. For the time zone, obviously I've got Australia, Melbourne. If you don't know what yours is, you can just click this here. Click where you are, so let's say Europe, for example, and it'll give you what the time zone formats are. Now this is pretty common with these time zone formats when you're setting up stuff. 
So it's a really useful website actually, I'd probably bookmark it if I was you. Then check whether it's HTTPS or if it's just local HTTP, leave it unchecked. Once you're ready, go ahead and click test connection. If it lights up green, that means everything is good. If it goes red, check over the information you've put in, something isn't working and it's not able to connect. Then once you're done, go ahead and click save. It'll take you to the next screen. So the Tortoli settings here. Start of the wrapped period. So we've got 1st of January 2021 going to the 1st of January 2022. So exactly one year, for example. Here's what our intro page says. New year, new page of stats. So maybe you want to say, maybe you want to say, let's see how you traveled this year. You can set that. Do you want to get users movie stats, show stats, show buddy? So that means, you know, if you've got two people who watch something a lot at the same time, it'll put them together and say, you know, this is your show buddy, for example. Uh, if you have music running out of your Plex through Tortoli as well, get your music stats as well. Server-wide movie stats, server-wide show, server-wide music. So what that means is basically this is the user stuff and then this is server-wide. Um, then you want it to log API calls, you can do that. Cache results for later use is there as well and clearing the cache once you're done. Once you're done, go ahead and click finish and done. So then when the user goes ahead and puts their username in, they'll pretty much get their stats. So I hope you enjoyed that guys. Really hope you've been enjoying our content. I'm just gonna take this moment to talk to you guys one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. I just wanna say thank you very much for supporting us uh, this year. It's been a wild, wild ride. And you know, look, we're getting closer and closer to 8,000 subscribers and I'm starting to wonder you know, how we made it this far. We're really, really enjoying it and we can't do it without you. So thank you very much for your support. You're always gonna have critics in the community, but I think it's really important that we focus on the positives and what people are enjoying from our work. And by looking at feedback from you guys, it's obvious that you guys are enjoying what we're doing and you're helping us come up with new ideas and new ways to challenge ourselves. So thank you very much for any type of support you give us. If it's just a simple like on a video, if it's subscribing to our channel, becoming a paid member, if it's joining our Discord, whatever the case might be, we appreciate you and I thank you very much for that. We couldn't do it without you. And as usual, if you do want to join part of the conversation and help us develop further, you want to just come in for a chat, maybe you just want to meet some like-minded people, feel free to join our Discord. We'd love to have you there. The link is in the description and you can join at any time. Like I said, I hope you guys enjoy the changes we've made to the docs as well. We've done some really, really good work here. We've made it into a much more user-friendly space. And I think it will make it a lot easier for us to be able to interact with developers and community members to make sure we've got a nice central place that you can follow all this stuff with. One very final thing, guys, our next cloud video is coming soon. We did announce already a few weeks ago that we were doing a Nextcloud video. So we are still gonna do that. Doesn't matter whether there's other people making videos about it or not. We did say we were gonna do it and we're gonna do it. So wait till you see our version of it and see what you think. I hope you guys enjoy it. It's been a work in progress. We've got about 10 people working on it and we've got some great feedback so far. And there's been a lot of changes with Nextcloud recently. So I think you guys will really enjoy seeing some of the more in-depth stuff that we can give you in a more succinct manner. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next Ibricorp video.